Have you ever felt a strange hunger in your heart for more of God? A deep longing for a stronger walk with God? An unusual dissatisfaction with daily activities? And a nudging to draw closer to God? If your answer is yes, then it is important for you to know that it is a great thing when a person is dissatisfied with the mundane, while thirsting for a more meaningful and Jesus-pleasing life. Matthew 5, 6 Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be fulfilled. Some people call it a crave for an encounter with God, a desire to meet with God and experience Him on a deeper level. But is that possible? Can people still have encounters today? Just like the individuals in the Bible that met God and got to know Him in a way that was beyond the general knowledge of God, is it even possible to meet God or hear His voice? The Bible lets us know that it is possible and that it even pleases God when we seek Him diligently. Hebrews 11:6. But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. So how can we have genuine encounters with God? The simple starting point for experiencing God on a deeper level is preparation. To prepare is to get something or someone ready for use or consideration. Here are things to do when preparing. Number 1. Set out a place and time for your spiritual adventure. It is easy to get distracted with everyday issues, but when we are able to focus, we can experience God on a deeper level. Proverbs 18.1 Through desire a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermediateth with all wisdom. Number 2. Sanctify yourself. This means to repent and purge yourself of all that defiles your heart. 2 Timothy 2, 19-22 Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. As believers, when we start getting hungry for more of God, then we also have to lay aside sins and weights that distract us easily. Joshua 3 AMP says, Then Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves for his purpose, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders, miracles among you. You can appear before God in church, yet he won't appear or speak to you if you still hold on stubbornly to sins that he has asked you to let go of. Sin always cheats on us out of God's best. Grace doesn't exempt us from sanctification. See what the Lord of God said in 1 John 1, 9. If we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, He is faithful and just, true to His own nature and promises, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us continually from all unrighteousness, our wrongdoing, and everything not in conformity with His will and purpose. If we say that we have not sinned, refusing to admit acts of sin, we make Him out to be a liar by contradicting him in his word is not in us. Also, Romans 6, 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we, that are dead to sin, live any longer therein? Know ye not, that so many of us are as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are burdened with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Along with the desire for an encounter with Jesus, there must also be a thirst for right living. Number 2. Clearly define your mission for seeking to encounter Jesus. We see Apostle Paul sojourning to the Isle of Patmos to seek God's word in Revelation 1, 9, KJV. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. His purpose was to receive more revelation about God's word 
and get clarity about Jesus' testimony. Number three, be spiritually alert so that you can hear what God is saying and to see what God is showing. Habakkuk 2, 1. I will stand at my guard post and station myself on the tower, and I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what answer I will give as his spokesman when I am reproved. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and engrave it plainly on clay tablets, so that the one who reads it will run. For the vision is yet for the appointed future time. It hurries towards the goal of fulfillment. It will not fail. Even though it delays, wait patiently for it, because it will certainly come. It will not delay. Your alertness determines the answer you will get. Where you stand and how you stand determines what you see and hear. John said in Revelation 1, 10 AMP, I was in the Spirit in special communication with the Holy Spirit and empowered to receive and record the revelation from Jesus Christ on the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a loud voice like the sound of a trumpet. To be spiritual means that your heart is free from offenses, worrying or thoughts that tempt you to disregard God's way. Spirituality will help you fix your heart, fixed on God and His purposes, even when you are doing mundane chores, fasting off foods, social media, or routine TV shows, and choosing to spend that time with God will also increase your spiritual sensitivity. It took a spiritual sensitive Elijah to hear God in 1 Kings 19.11. So he said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord was passing by. And a great and powerful wind was tearing out the mountains and breaking the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was the sound of a gentle blowing. When Elijah heard the sound, he wrapped his face in his mantle, cloak, and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And behold, a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, armies, because the sons of Israel have abandoned, broken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, only I, am left, and they seek to take away my life. Number 4. Be fervent in prayers. Fervosity in prayers is to be earnest and heartfelt when praying. It implies that your heart and your whole being is connected to that prayer and that you aren't saying words that are empty. Times like this are not moments for casual prayers, but for prayers that are intense and hungry for answers. Elijah is popular for this kind of intense prayers. James 5, 16 through 18. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Let's pray. My God, my King, I thank you for showing me how to get set to memorable encounters with you. I admit that I may have missed out on so much in my relationship with you because haven't sought you earnestly. Thank you, because now I know how to seek you and move to a deeper level in my walk with you. In the name of Jesus, I chose to draw near to you because I know that as I do, you will also draw nearer to me. Thank you, Father, for great revelations, insights, and supernatural ability that awaits me. Amen.